Now that we know we're going to need reducing balance depreciation for some of our non-current assets, uh, we're going to look at it and say, how is it different to straight line? So straight line was a method which charges or allocates the same amount of depreciation every reporting period, whereas reducing balance actually charges more depreciation in the early years of an asset's useful life, and then will charge less depreciation in the later years. So it follows the principle for reducing balance depreciation that some assets will generate more revenue in their early life and less in later years, and therefore so those assets will be used up or consumed more in their early life than in their later years. And we had examples where things like vehicles, equipment, and machinery. So the theory behind using reducing balance depreciation, it all comes down to the reporting period principle where we need to match our revenues and expenses each period. So if more depreciation is, or the asset's going to be used more in its early life, we should charge more depreciation and therefore we're going to match that with uh, more revenue at the beginning and then we'll charge less depreciation, uh, will be matched against less revenue in the asset's later life. Relevance also backs this up. It says we need to calculate an accurate profit to help us make uh, better decisions. And charging more depreciation in early periods is actually correct because it represents the way the asset's actually been used rather than at the end of its life when it's being used less. So we charge less depreciation. Let's have an example to compare the two. On the 1st of July, a business purchased a new vehicle with a cost of $30,000 and the owner's debating whether to use either the straight line method or the reducing balance method. So, got a cost of $30,000. If he's going to use straight line, the uh, estimated residual value is going to be $9,000 and the useful life will be six years. For reducing balance, the cost will be $30,000. And then we need what's called the reducing balance depreciation. So in this case, it's called, uh, sorry, it's 15%. So we know how to calculate straight line. We use our formula. We substitute in the cost, the residual, and the useful life and we'll end up with depreciation every year of $3,500. Now that doesn't really make sense for a car or a delivery van because it's going to get less efficient in generating revenue as it gets older. So we probably want the alternative method which is reducing balance. But how do we calculate that? So the formula we need, it's actually quite simple. We take the reducing balance percentage which for us is 15% and we times it by the carrying value at the end of the period. So going back to unit three, the carrying value was the assets cost less the accumulated depreciation. So let's look at the example of the car now and start at the beginning. At the beginning of the assets life, its cost is $30,000. So reducing balance depreciation, we take our percentage, which is 15, and times it by the carrying value, which is 30,000. So the depreciation expense in year one will be 4,500. Now the carrying value going forward, that is going to be our cost. So we've got 30,000 and then we've depreciated 4,500. So our carrying value at the end of the first year will be $25,500. So in year two, we now take our reducing balance percentage of 15, but we times it by the new carrying value, which is 25,500. And you can see that's 3,825. So what we've seen happen is depreciation go down from year one to year two. Now, with a carrying value of uh, 25,500 at the start of the period, we depreciated another 3,825. So the new carrying value will be 21,675. So in the third year, we times that by 15% and we get 3,251. And that'll give us a new carrying value at the end of the third year of 18,424 and so on. So let's just follow that answer out and we'll see that we're going to have more depreciation at the beginning and less at the end. So in year one, the expense was 15% times the carrying value, which was $30,000. That was depreciation of 4,500, which meant a total accumulated of the same. And that meant the carrying value was $30,000 less the 4,500 and that left a carrying value of 25,500. So in year two, what was different was we didn't go on times 15% by the original cost. What we did is we took the new carrying value from over here. So we just take it at the end of last period and times it for this period. And that gave us 3,825. Add that together with the existing depreciation. We've got total depreciation of 8,325. And that means a new carrying value of 21,675. So what we've done is take the cost here 
we figured out the total amount depreciated here and we'd subtract that away and we've ended up with the carrying value of 21,675. So going forward, we're gonna times it by the carrying value every year. We'll add that to the accumulated depreciation and get a new carrying value. And following it through in year four, accumulated depreciation goes up, carrying value goes down. Year five, depreciation, 15% times 15,660. Accumulated depreciation goes up, carrying value goes down. Year six, 15% times 13,311. Accumulated depreciation goes up, carrying value goes down. What's important to note is that the depreciation expense has decreased. We've charged more in the assets early years when the van's gonna generate more revenue and less over time. So we started off with 4,500, then we went down to 3,825, then 3,251, 2,764, 2,349, and then finally 1,996. So looking at that as a chart, we can see there's a fair difference between the two methods. So looking at year one, reducing balance charge more depreciation than straight line. In year two, it got a little bit closer, but reducing balance charge more. Year three, it actually is the point where reducing balance becomes less than straight line. But year four gets much less. Year five, significantly more. And then by the end, we're actually charging almost half the depreciation we're using reducing balance, um, whereas straight line, it's going to be 3,500 every year. So there's a conflict we always know about depreciation uh, with relevance and reliability. That's no different now that we're using reducing balance. We know that depreciation is relevant because it helps us uh, figure out the most accurate expense uh, that's been used to generate revenue this period. That helps us determine an accurate profit, and then we can go and make better decisions based on that. But what we do know is that depreciation is not reliable because it involves some estimates. So when we did straight line, we made an estimate about residual value and useful life. But whilst we didn't use that method this time, we used reducing balance, but we made one giant assumption. We took that reducing balance percentage. So we used 15%. So where did that number come from? Well, there's no sort of set guide. It was someone's guess or estimate. So therefore, that's just not reliable. There's no source document to back up 15%. So the same conflict between relevance and reliability exists with uh, reducing balance depreciation as it did with uh, straight line depreciation.